Okay, so what we've got here is a um, 60 millimeter NEMAG speedometer made by Smiths Jaeger in about um, ooh, perhaps the pattern goes back to around 1930 something, but this one was made around 1950, perhaps something like that. And taking it apart, you don't need very many tools. Much equipment. We start off with the, the speedometer. Um, and probably the best thing to do is just to unscrew the, the dial, which is on a, a bayonet type fitting, and just need to get it in the right place. So there's the uh, glass and the bezel, and then we've got the inside of the device itself. I'm doing the two 3BA screws that hold the actual speedometer movement itself in the case and ease that out. It's quite easy. It should come out with a bit of a twist. Case looks nice and okay. Pop that to one side and we've got the speedometer itself. Looking at the bits of the speedometer we've got the drive comes in here and it turns this brass worm gear there which in turn drives this little toughnel gear. The toughnel gear is connected up to the advancing mechanism which advances the odometer. So that's the odometer side of it and the speedometer side of it is this magnet that travels around at speed, driven from the uh, gearbox lead, which then pulls round this aluminium drag cup, and the aluminium drag cup is connected up to the needle, so that's how that turns round. Okay, disassembling it, it's probably a good idea just to get a bit of wood with a hole in it, which is what I've got here. And then to pull the needle off, it's not difficult, you need to get a piece of card, slide it in, and then using a really a pair of lifters is a good plan, but if you haven't got those a set of screwdrivers, and then just ease the needle off. That was handy, wasn't it? <laughs> that was banging away there. <coughs> Lunchtime, I think. Lunchtime, yeah. Now remove the two 9BA screws. I suppose we also add we also repair clocks. <laughs> two 9BA screws that come off and then we've got the, the dial off and uh, not in bad condition but just put that safely to one side in the real world we'd probably put it in a plastic bag stop it being damaged but we'll just put it here for demonstration purposes right now I just turn this round a bit and you can see all the the important bits and pieces. Can you focus in on that um, hairspring and the uh, that pin there here which is connected or holds actually the hairspring or the return spring in and we need to get that pin out and that's fairly simple just ease it out with a pair of pliers and then we can there's four screws to get the plate off, but we've also got a spring that is the, the spring on the uh, odometer. But we'll just slacken these four screws if we can. Okay. One, two, three, one hidden round there, four. Just to turn that round, and there's a spring which you can't see, but that's you'll see it when you're trying to do it. Just a matter of unhooking that. Put my fingers in the way. There we are. Whoops, it's gone over there. That's a good thing to avoid. There's the spring. Now we can undo that hole of that plate. It helps having big fingers, I think, for this. <laughs> this all work. Bigger fingers like shovels, the better. And try not to drop things around. This will end up being how not to do it. <laughs> I suppose I have to do it. 
Okay, turn that around again. Now we've got to be a bit careful when we lift this off that we don't damage the, the spring. So, a bit of care. And there we are, we've separated the odometer plate, stator plate, off. And put that to one side. And here we've got the aluminium drag cup and the return spring. And there's the bottom bearing, bottom pivot. Here's the top pivot. Pop that to one side again. And now we've got the magnet itself which spins around at high speed. As the magnet spins around it draws that cap round. To get that out there's a little there's two screws, one there, one there with a keyhole. We undo those. One, two, just get those out of the way. They're different length to the other one, so you shouldn't really be able to get them muddled up. And pull the keyhole one way or the other. That should enable that to come out. So now we've got the magnet, this little locking keyhole plate, and there we are. That's the magnet, and that drives as the magnet revolves, it pulls this drag cup round, and the drag cup pulls the needle around. And when the magnet stops, the return spring pulls that back. So there's that off. And then the last few bits is the little terry clip that holds this um, in. It should come off without too much of a trouble. There's the terry clip. Then the advancing lever. Ah, and that's nice and tight. And there's the odometer drive gear. And that's really it. You can get this there's a little plate there, a little washer, and a, a f uh, must be a felt oiling area. That's it really, and that's all the part. And once you've got it apart, it's a matter of cleaning it and putting it back together again. So uh, we're not going to take the odometer apart this time. We're going to do that. So tools aren't that many. A pair of pliers, a couple of pairs of tweezers screwdriver, instrument screwdriver, a couple of pairs of levers, nothing really much, and that high complicated piece of card, and the disassembly is just a bit of wood with a hole in it, and a 16mm hole and a bit of kitchen towel over that to catch any of the stuff. And we've got then the main casing, or the uh, Bit everything's hidden inside. That's the bit that locks it onto the dashboard. Two screws, two 3BA screws that hold the frame into the case, the drag cut and the return spring, the needle or the pointer, the dial, the stator plate which has got all the odometer stuff on it which we're not going to touch this time. Return spring for the odometer. The pin that holds the um, return spring in place. The two dial screws. The four stator plate screws. Which hold the stator plate which is this thing onto the aluminium frame. You've got the little keyhole lock which holds the magnet assembly into the main frame and the two screws that hold those on. We've got the little washer or spacer that fits on the uh, felt oiler, the terry spring, the odometer wheel and gear and if the odometer is not working the chances are that one of these teeth is broken off so that needs to be replaced and the advancing lever. And then the last bit is the magnet and the brass 
worm gear and that's the whole thing really, there's nothing else. It's very easy. That'll do.